uh, Vic Lombardi here with my Uncle Tony. Every uh, every well-versed Italian has an Uncle Tony. His real name is Pedro Antonio. Pietro Antonio. Peter Anthony. Right. So why do you go by Tony? Because when I came here from Italy, not only the students made fun of me, but the teachers made fun of my name. Mm -hmm. They would go P, Pi, Poo. Okay, so you're named after your grandfather. Yeah. That story went way too long, so I had to interrupt you. Sorry. <laughs> so, so gra my great grandfather Pietro Antonio, mm -hmm. who smuggled his way to this country in what year? 1933. Crazy story. By the way, if you're interested in this story, this is my uncle's new book that he wrote. It's a long one, but it's a great one. It's got pictures, photos, everything. This is the family right here on the back side. This is the family when they made the trip to uh, the United States from uh, Italy. What year was this? 1966. 1966. That's my grandfather there. There's Tony right there. Uh, my dad didn't come over then because what happened? Why did he stay? Because he was over 21 and he wasn't uh, part of the immigration papers. So he had grandpa had to come over here, file papers. So he came over six months later. Okay. And this is the um, the name of the book. No, no. Tell us a story. Tell people what no, no means. No, no, no. Oh, you no. right? <laughs> Isabella doing the taping right now. You okay, babe? Yeah. Okay. No, no means grandpa. Grandfather. Grandfather it's... tells the story. This is the original house that they grew up in in uh, Old Italy, Villa San Michele, tiny, Didn't we tiny just village. Visit that house? Yeah, you visited that house. You saw that house, remember? Grandpa. Grandpa had all the weeds in it and mm -hmm. stuff, and he was trying to find the. Remember, he found the pot that was up on the window? Oh, yeah. So, there. All right, so we're, we're at my uncle's house. We're at my uncle's house here. Let's move out to the light a little bit. And he lives here on the foothills of uh, Golden. And it's a little windy here tonight, so excuse the wind. But this is his bocce court that he built. And this is very reminiscent of the uh, bocce court that's in uh, the little town in Villa San Michele. Is this a regulation size bocce court? Yeah. Yeah? Close. yeah. Everything's good? Yeah. All right, so you were 13 when you moved here. Correct. 13 years of age. Yeah. And you went to what school? Uh, Two weeks, my grandfather put me in Lake Junior High School. Okay. It was two weeks of total torture. Torture. Why? Nightmare. Because the first day that my grandfather, my dad, brought me to school, yeah. my mother dressed me in an oversized checkered suit with a bow tie, <laughs> and she replaced the black leather Italian shoes with red cowboy boots that my grandfather had especially made for me. So it went downhill from there. Yeah. So you go from Lake Junior High School to where? And then we moved to uh, like Northwest Denver. So I went to Skinner Skinner Junior Skinner. High School. Oh, that's and where it we was. Went and it was uh, torture there again. All right. So the reason why this book, well, it's obviously important to a guy like me, because I wrote the Ford and uh, it's, it features my family. But anybody who immigrated to this country in the last 20, 30, 50 years. You know, most immigration stories are about immigrants from the 1800s, the early 1900s. Yeah. This is an immigration story about recent immigrants because yeah. it's still, obviously, immigration is always going to be one of those weird, controversial stories, but it still happens to this day. And your family immigrating to this country yeah. and is I, a great I, story. I could remember the nights spent around the kitchen table, my mom and dad, up wondering whether should we go? Should we not go? Should we stay home? Life is okay here. Or should we go there for the kids? Will it be a better life? So it wasn't like we were living in a dirt floor. Yeah, but you lived house. on the land too, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. What, what was village. life there like? It was it was a small village, Italian mountain village. Whatever we grew, it was for our own use. We yeah. sold the cow or sheep here and there but uh, Isabella you were in that little village you explain mm -hmm. what was that village like um it was like really small yeah. and they had no doors they were like little what are they called those like oh those little beads of, yeah, yeah and then but it was actually really fun it was cool yeah. there was if of course um up top if you go up the hill there was a soccer course oh uh, yeah uh, the soccer so some of these photos in here are amazing uh, because I haven't seen some of these myself. Again, some of these are, <laughs> my uncle looks exactly like his grandkids today. But there's a photo in here of my mom and dad. Here it is. 
Look at this photo. These are two of them. These are the day my mom and dad got married. Can you explain what's going on here with the shotguns? Well, yeah, the, the, the guys uh, with the shotgun, they would uh, shoot the guns to, that's part of the good luck to the newlyweds. Yeah. I don't know if I... Did uh, anybody get hurt? No, but it, they were loud. Okay. And these kids here, yeah. you see, uh, under people's skirts, they're they're scrambling around to uh, grab the money and confetti, okay. which is the almond, yeah, uh, the almond sure. candy. Yeah, confetti. Confetti. That was part of the uh, wedding celebration. Now, one thing that I thought was very interesting in this book too is that you spent some time when you were in Italy. You got schooled in a seminary. Where was that seminary? So at the age of 11, my, my dad brought me to uh, Todi Cumbria, to um, Franciscan Monastery. Okay. I spent two years of my uh, young life there. Right here. I hated every minute of it. Yeah. But looking back on it, I'm glad I, I experienced that life. It taught you discipline though, didn't yeah. it? Yes. Yes. It gave you discipline. Yeah. And I learned how to play soccer very, okay. very well. This is the actual photo with my uncle and my grandmother, my late grandmother, no, my nonna, Maria, when they came to the country, right? When you guys left Italy. That was, uh, she had a look of anguish on her face. She was going to leave her son and her daughter and their mom and their all of her siblings. How old Italy. was she at this? She was 40, so my dad was 48, so she oh my was God. 45. I, I'm 48 today. Yeah. So grandpa was 48 years old. When he, when he sold picked up, everything. sold everything, and moved to another country. Seventeen hundred me away. Seventeen hundred dollars was in this. Totally had. Was inside this pouch that my mom had sold, and he had it inside his shirt, undershirt, tied, uh, protected, and so on and so forth. So he came to this country, and he had several jobs. He worked as a janitor for many years. He worked for Rocky Mount uh, Rocky Mountain uh, yes. newspaper. He worked at my old high school, Holy Family High School. Yeah. Come here, Aunt. Come here. Aubrey, Aubrey, this is one of uh, of your grandkids. Yeah. Well, are there Aubrey. any questions there, Bella? You said something. I said, does any? I didn't see any questions, but if anybody wants to. Oh, ask okay. Questions. Uh, this is my grandfather right here, my late grandfather, Victor. He lived on the corner of Forty uh, Fourth and Perry. His yard got voted uh, nicest yard in North Denver it was by the North Denver by Tribune. The North Denver Tribune <laughs> many times. Yes. We got killer tomatoes and roses. Yes. yes. So this book is, again, it's meaningful for someone like me, obviously, because it's, it's about my family. And Tell the story real quick. When Nonna, my grandmother, right here, she had to go get her um, her citizen, citizenship papers, remember that? Yeah, yeah. To become a true citizen. And, and they asked certain questions. And what was the question and answer with Nonina? Well, first let me back up. Six okay. months earlier, we went, we went down for the exam. Yeah. And I remember the lady uh, examiner uh, pretty much kicked us out of there and said, don't come back here until you can read, okay. uh, uh, write, and understand English and know a little bit about our government. So my mom said, oh, come on, brutta che la Which means she was so brutal. She was mean. mean. She was mean. <laughs> so six months of me on the, around our kitchen table trying to teach my third grade educated mom and dad about <laughs> Italian government, I mean, uh, American government polit political uh, uh, system and Italian English. It didn't go very well. So we went back and uh, so they, he quite, the guy came in and he was pleasant, tall guy, he towered over us. He was pleasant, questioned me, I passed. So then he uh, questioned my father and uh, he asked my father who the governor of Colorado was and he knew it. Was it Dick Lamb at the time? No, it was John Love. Okay. John Love. So he made him write something. It's in the, it's in the book. I have yeah. the actual. He made him write. I work hard, and it was, it was. It was close. I don't know what the hell it was. It was English Italian dialect. Uh, and the guy looked at him. He, he's like, okay, all right. So then he moved to my mom, and both uh, my dad and I were like, oh God, here we go. This is gonna be trouble. So he asked my mom. Uh, uh, how to write some? She attempted to write something. It was it was okay. She wrote yeah. in Denver, correct. Everything yeah. else was kind of. But then they got to the to the political part, and uh, the guy goes, uh, Mrs. Lombardi, um, can you tell me who the first president of the United States, the father of our country, and was Nixon? <laughs> oh, that's good because that's our president now. But I don't know about the first president of the United States. And she. She's looking at me, 
and she's like whispering like the guy can't hear. She goes, eh, no capisci. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand what he says. I'm telling her in Italian, you know, the first president of the United States. And I think I we went over, but she forgot. And uh, so she thought about it, thought about it. My, me and my dad going, okay, this is it. We're going to flunk again. And all, all, all of a sudden, she just, she just got all excited. She goes, Buffalo Bill. <laughs> Buffalo Bill. <laughs> and the guy started laughing, and he got up, and he goes, congratulations. You guys are going to be American citizens. That's great. That was, that That's was a great story. So yeah. this is full of stories like that. In fact, there's a great, I didn't even know about this one. There's a story here oh, of yeah. the time that when I was a sportscaster in Phoenix and uh, the Broncos went to their the Super Bowl in San Diego, Super Bowl 32, they beat the Packers. We're huge Bronco fans, obviously, grew up Bronco fans. I had two press credentials as a Phoenix sportscaster, and that was back before they really checked your name and security. I got how many of my family members into the game? Seven? Uh, yeah. yeah. Seven family members with two press credentials. There's a shot of my cousin Dominic and my brother Mario, who was 12 at the time, on the field. On the field at yeah. the game. Yeah, I the, consider that the greatest moment ever as a member of the media. The funniest part of that it was uh, Mario was the last guy I got in. So I went out with two press passes and Mario was waiting and he's like all sad because he, you know, he's not getting into the game. So, okay, he's the last one. So Mario and I started walking towards the media entrance and the press pass is hanging like below and we're, we're walking by and I'm trying to hide him. And so we walk by and the guy goes, whoa, 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 whoa. And I go, oh crap, this is it. So he goes, who are you with? And uh, I forgot what station Vic worked with. And I said, KPK, KP, 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 And uh, the guy just goes, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so again, yes, the book is available. How can people buy the book? It's available on Amazon, Amazon. Kindle, ebook, and I'm going to have printed copies in my business. That's probably the cheapest way. It'll be like 20 bucks. Okay, he's got an upholstery shop uh, on 52nd and Marshall, right? Yeah, but you'll have some yeah. and my, the rest of the family will have some. Anybody, anybody so else. if anyone, anyone wants to read about the great American story, okay? The immigration story, the most recent story. And it doesn't matter what what culture, what creed, doesn't matter. Everybody lives this story every single day in this country. I think this is one of the better ones told. It took him 10 years to write this. He started this 10 years ago. Yeah. Was it? Oh, uh, even longer. I mean, on paper, I actually started in 2010. Yeah. I'm, I'm just writing. It was a labor of love. So we appreciate you if, you, uh, if you're interested. No, no, tell us a story with my Uncle Tony. No, no. No, no, no you're right. I always used to say no, no. You're right, Aubrey. I'm Nona's, just that one. I'm right. Nona's your mom's. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to take it and watch you now. Okay. Turn off. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.